Galatians, our series we've been teaching on is uh, we are free. Um, we are free from the law that gives us, leads us to bondage because we are in the spirit. The spirit gives us, we can't change it. Can you turn it down a little bit then? That's too loud. Can I hear you? I don't want to yell. Uh, is that better? Yeah. All right. Thank you. That's what I love about our family. We can just kind of talk and share and, you know, just be real with each other. I, I always think of church environment like this as being in, um, in our home, in our living room. And, and sitting in our living room, we're teaching and, and sharing God's Word. Um, I came out of the, the uh, realm where I had to wear a three-piece suit and I act like I was the authority figure in the building, you know. And it's not true, because the same spirit that's in you is the same spirit in me, and we can have the knowledge of God because God gives us the knowledge, amen? And we're going to share a little bit about that. Um, so if you will, we're going to be in Galatians chapter 5, um, the second part of that. I kind of ended the sermon last week because I didn't want to get into this part because I think there's just too much here for us to learn this morning. And if you will also, we're going to be in the book of John, so if you want to go to turn there. Um, also, if you have your Bibles, if you have your cell phones or whatever you're using, you can just switch over that. But we'll be in John chapter 15, chapter 14, and chapter 16 also today, because I believe we need to understand what we're about to read today, and the Holy Spirit will help us in that. So, let's read, uh, if you will, we're going to read verse 16, and I'm going to end in verse uh, 18, and we're going to go through and preach through the last part of that also. But today, let's start with verse 16. It says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you will you are not under the law. Underline that in your Bible. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So I thought this morning, as before we get into what we're not supposed to do and what we're supposed to do, let's look at who this Holy Spirit is for a little bit, okay? And it's not going to be an exhaustive study of, the, of who the Spirit is, but we are going to look at uh, what the Holy Spirit is. Uh, is helping us to do. So let's turn to the book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're going to go to chapter 15, and we're just going to want to share a little bit of this with you. It says, verse 15, verse 1, it says, I am the vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does have fruit, he prunes so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in, me, in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And this is Jesus now. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, they can do what? Nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away with, uh, and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to my disciples. So this is what the Lord is telling us this morning. It says, if you remain in me and I in him, what does that mean? It says that if you remain in Jesus, if you follow Jesus, if you listen to Jesus, if you do what he says, then he's going to be in you. So we're supposed to remain in him and we remain in him. And if we do, we do this for the glory of the Father. How amazing is that? What, we, and we learned a few weeks ago that we are the glory of the Lord through the whole earth. Are we not? The church, the body of Christ, is the glory of the Lord. So we, as we reign in Him, 
and he, we, he remains in us, we, are, we show his glory through the whole earth. Now let's go on a little bit further here, because also we find out, uh, in, well that, that's in Colossians 1.27, it says, We, the church, is the glory of hope, or Christ is the glory, uh, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory for the whole earth. So we look at our country, as Andy had referred to a little earlier, we got a lot of turmoil going on right now, but we are the glory of God in the earth to bring peace to the whole world. That's what our responsibility is, amen? We, because of our, our, our connection with Christ, because we are redeemed by his blood, because we're God's, Father God's children, we are now part of him in the world, and the world received peace now, um, in the 70s or 60s, we had this peace sign. Anybody know that? You ever see, uh, you know, we go like this, peace, right? That's not the peace I'm talking about. All right? That's not the peace I'm talking about. The peace I'm talking about is the peace that comes when the presence of God is in your life. So we sing all the songs, you know, everything, our life must be messed up. It's, it's, there's chaos in the world, there's chaos in our lives. We can't bring that, but we have peace. What peace is that? The peace is that the presence of God is in our lives. The Spirit of God is with us, and He anoints us, and He, he, he brings us that peace that can't, the Bible tells us we can't even understand it. Why are you so peaceful now, and you're, everything's messed up? Because God's presence is in your life, amen? And it's through His Spirit that He does that. So let's go uh, to chapter 14. And Jesus explains to his disciples this Holy Spirit. And I want to explain it to you in Jesus' word what the Spirit's responsibility is, what he's supposed to do for us. How is the Spirit, you know, let me go back just a little bit. So we have, we understand that there's a Father who sent the Son to redeem us, and that revelation of that is given to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so the Holy Spirit draws us to Father God. And we can only become in Father God's presence through the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. We are guilty because of sin, and we're no longer guilty because we believe in Him. We don't have to work for it. We just simply believe. Amen. So let's look at this. It says, verse 15, chapter 14 of John, verse 15. It says, If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I'll ask the Father, and He will give you another counselor. Or, in some translations, it says helper, to be with you forever. How many need a helper right now? Yeah. Right? How many need someone to help you in, in, in life, right? And in every situation. It's the counselor who will be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. You can't see the spirit, but the spirit is in you. He'll lead you to all truth. But you know him, for he lives with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you because before long the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live. Because I live, you will also live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. See how it goes? So yeah. Jesus is in the Father, and he's only going to say what the Father says. Right? He's gonna, his, the Father's love is going to be expressed through, through our relationship with Jesus, and it's gonna, Jesus is going to be in us. How is he going to be in us? Through his Spirit. That's how we understand the things of God. And God wants us to have that understanding. He doesn't want us to think like the world thinks in every situation. We have to think like God wants. So he's going to change our mind. We'll see that in just a minute. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will... will uh, be loved by my Father, and I too will love Him and show myself to Him. So you obey God, and God will reveal Himself to you. How simple is that? Obey Him and love Him, and He will do those things for you. Now look at um, verse 25. It says, "I and all this I have spoken to you, spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, or the Helper, the second time uh, the Holy Spirit is called the Helper, uh, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name." will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives, as I explained that. Do not let your heart be troubled, troubled, and do not be afraid. So here's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like the ultimate uh, discipler. He's going to teach you everything. He's going to teach you what the truth is. He's going to teach you who the Father is. He's going to teach you the love of, of Jesus. He's going to lead you to... How about this? 
He's going to look, what's truth in the world today? What is truth? What is truth? So everybody has their idea what truth is, but the Holy Spirit, because Jesus said he'll give it to you, will lead you to all truth. And we'll, you're right, it, it is in the word of God, and we'll get to that in a minute. We'll go back to Galatians and show you. It's, it, Jesus will teach us everything that Jesus taught his disciples. So he's, the Holy Spirit is continually to make disciples for the kingdom of God. That's what his job is. He's helping us to understand the depth and the width and the height and, of God's love that we can't even put our mind around. It's so amazing, God's love for us. Is it not? Come on, give me a smile. He's like, yeah, God loves you, and he loves me, and we don't have to earn it. We don't have to do anything for it. He loves you and me. And he said he was going to give us the spirit to help us understand who he is. Now, let's go to um, um, John chapter 16. Again, Jesus is telling his disciples. Now, you remember, it, it, I don't know if you, some of you may or may not know this. This is, Jesus was like teaching his disciples right before he was going to the cross to be crucified for our sins. So this is where some, like, okay, this is like, you need to know this. You have to, this is, you have to understand, this is really important. I want you to, to get in your spirit, disciples. You're not going to be alone. You're not going to be orphans. You're not going to be, you're going to, you know, if you get persecuted, all the stuff that we know that happened in the early church, but I'm going to be with you through my Holy Spirit. Amen. So you're not alone because he's going to be your helper. Help you understand other things. So let's look at, look at John chapter 16 and let's go to verse 7. Or let's start with verse 5. I'm sorry. 16, verse 5. Now I'm going to him who sent me, Jesus telling his disciples that he was going to be with the Father. Right? He died on the cross, he was buried, and it says on the third day he rose from the dead, ascending into the right hand of the Father. It's an amazing story of what Jesus did for us. Praise the Lord. Yet now, not, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are full, full of grief. Yeah, because Jesus spent, in the earthly time he was here, he spent day and night with his disciples. And now he's saying he's leaving. So we're like, wait, what are we going to do? You're our teacher, you're our leader. What are we supposed to do? And he's saying, don't be worried. Verse 7, but I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I go away. Unless I go away, the counselor or the helper, again, third time you hear the word helper, will not come to you, but I, if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of, of guilt in regards to sin and righteousness and judgment in regards to sin. Because men do not believe in me. So let's go back through that little section right there. The Holy Spirit is going to come and he has something he's going to do. First thing he's going to do is he's going to convict us of our sin. All men, right? All men. We're going to, he's going to convict us of our sin. The second thing is our righteousness. See, we're made righteous because of Jesus. Jesus, right? We are made righteous because of Jesus. We are his righteousness because we believe in him. We become righteous because we believe in him. It's not nothing you've earned by yourself. You can't be good enough for God. Can you say amen? Amen. He, he, you're, you are good because he did it for you. He made you righteous. And also in regards to judgment. There is a judgment coming. But remember, I told you we're free from that judgment if we are in Christ Jesus. If we belong to him, if we abide in the branch, if we abide in the vine, then we abide in him, then judgment, like the world's going to have, is not going to be for us. Amen? The Holy Spirit reminds us of that judgment. Also, um, unbelief. The Holy Spirit reminds us or tells us or shows us where unbelief is. How many of you have ever prayed this prayer? Father, help me and help my unbelief. Believers, right? Help me to really believe in you because I see in you is eternal life. I see hope in you. I see all these wonderful things, but I don't believe my in my person in my spirit i don't believe it but lord help me to believe and what happens the holy spirit helps you to understand how great and how wide and how deep the love of god is and then i can just say oh lord forgive me and or help me to believe and he helps me do that by his spirit so spirit let's go back over that again it says the counselor or the helper verse seven it says will not come to you, but if I go, so Jesus has to go. Verse 8, when he comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, isn't it kind of important to know about the Holy Spirit, isn't it? 
Because the Holy Spirit's going to help us. He's our helper. He's going to help us with our unbelief. He's going to help us and convict the world of guilt. So we as believers don't have to like tell people they're wrong. I think about all the stuff that's happening in the United States right now. We don't have to like say this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. We just need to pray that the Holy Spirit does his job and then we need our responsibility is to love. Right? I'll share that this in a little bit. Our responsibility is to obey the commands, and the commands are this, two simple commands. Love God, right? Yeah. And love our neighbor. Yeah. And who's our neighbor? It's like everybody. 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 It doesn't say just love all the white people or all the black people or all the Indian people or what it doesn't say that. It says love everybody because love wins. Because when I think about it, what drew me to Christ? It was God loved me. Even though I felt unworthy and unrighteous and unholy and blah, 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 I can go through the list of things I felt at that moment. But at that moment, God said, I love you. And it wiped away. I mean, I felt like everything was just coming off me. Amen? So it says that he would love us and he, and he would, um, and let's go a little bit further. It says, verse 10, in regards to righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. In regards to judgment, because I, the prince of this world, this devil, has been condemned. So the enemy of this world is already condemned. Jesus won the victory on the cross. So don't let the enemy tell you that God, that Jesus is not true. Amen? I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Underline that in the Bible. The spirit of truth will come and he will, he will lead, guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. So the Holy Spirit not only tells you about what your situation is right now and help you through it, but he'll also tell you what's to come. Right? What's in the future? Yes. The prophecy is about what's going to happen in this world. Well, the, you know, he's going to tell you those things. Amen? He'll guide you to truth and he'll tell you what to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and make it known to you. So how, who wants to know the mind of God? I mean, come on. Yeah, I would like to know the mind of God. I want to know what God's thinking. I mean, I want to, I want to know, right? I, mean, I want to be, I want to have, and he said the Holy Spirit will tell us that. So there's no, God's not hiding anything from us. He, he wants us to know everything about him. That, that is so amazing, right? So he said, we're free, we're free because of the cross to go into God's presence and, and talk to God. Anytime. Anytime. You don't, have, you don't have to wait for Sunday morning. You can actually do it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You can do it every, anytime you need him. Two o'clock in the morning when you're up or whenever you're up. God is there and he wants to talk with you. And the Holy Spirit is going to give us or tell us what the mind of God is. How crazy is that? I was never taught that. I was always taught that you had to go to church and you had to have the leadership has to tell you what God is saying. But here's his telling you that the Holy Spirit can tell you, because of the Spirit, what God's mind is. God, what is your will for my life? He will tell you. Yes. Right? What am I supposed to do? Oh, what, am I, what is my ministry? What, you know, what is life about? God is not going to keep a secret from you. He said he's going to tell you the truth through his Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do we need the Holy Spirit? Yes. Yeah. So all that belongs to the Father is mine. That's Jesus saying, all that the Father is, Father God, is Jesus's. That, this is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. In a little while you will see me no more. He's talking to his disciples. And then after a little while, you will see me again. Jesus coming back again. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is, is there. He's going to give us a uh, He's going to uh, reveal himself through his word. So through Jesus' word, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal himself to us. He's going to speak to us through his word. So all these men that wrote the Bible, uh, 66 books, in, in this, the Spirit of God will reveal who God is. Amen? Through prophecies in the Old Testament. He, and he's always, you know, he's just, the Holy Spirit is like talking to us all the time. So we read earlier that the Spirit of God is drawing men to God. So is it, it's like the Holy Spirit never... Shuts up. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he doesn't. Because as soon as you put your spiritual ears on, he's talking to you. Yeah. And he's guiding you. And he's leading you. I, I said, shut up in church tonight. That's for <laughs> But he doesn't. 
You know, I was, I was on a, I was talking, I was on a, I go fishing on Tuesday nights, I told you about that. Uh, and I like going fishing, I really enjoy it. I'm with my brother and my, and his future bride. And they're not believers yet. And uh, my brother tells me, I'm telling a story, and he says, well, is there an end to the story? I said, listen, I'm a preacher, I talk for 45 minutes, I got a long, it's going to take a long time to get to this end of the story, you know? So the Holy Spirit is always speaking to us. When we're fearful, we're doubtful, when we're, we're scared about life, we're not sure how we should walk with God, the Holy Spirit is talking to us. When we're joyful, when we're, celebrate, when we're celebrating what God's done in our life, God is there, amen? He wants to speak to us and, and be with us and celebrate with us what God has accomplished in our life. The Holy Spirit is always with us. We're never alone. We're not like orphans. We're not alone. I don't know if anybody has ever been an orphan. I know some people have, you know, you're alone and you're, you don't know, you have no hope, there's nothing, but the Holy Spirit does get, is always speaking to us and giving us hope, amen? That's what he wants us to know, he's always revealing himself. Uh, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter, I know I'm doing a lot of scripture because I think it's important that you hear from God's word more than me. Is that okay this morning? Yes. Everybody say, yeah, Pastor Bob, because you don't know what you're talking, no, just kidding. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Praise God. Wisdom from the Spirit of God. How many want wisdom here? I need wisdom to deal with my situation. I have no clue of what I need to do in my life, but the yes. wisdom. God gives wisdom to those who ask. And let's look at this. With verse 6, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age. So it's saying not wisdom of the world, but wisdom of God that he's going to give to you, all right? That's 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Are you there? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm, I'm, hey, God uses everybody. He used me too, you know. I, I tell people, I was a special ed when I was in junior high school. You know, I'm just, yeah, that's fine. I'm not bragging about it. I'm just telling you, God called me to do this. So you have to put up with my, my words that don't come out right sometimes. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Page 1. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 1045 in my Bible. It would be nice if we all had the same Bible, right? But we don't. That's fine. 1,323. Okay. Praise the Lord. And verse 6. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rules of this age who are coming to nothing. So everything in the world is coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God, what's the word? Revealed for our glory, for hit for our glory before the for before time came. None of us, none of the rules of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord Jesus. However, as it is written, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. Praise the Lord. No ears, no eyes have seen. Nor ears have heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those that love Him. Well, I can't love Him on my own. I mean, I mean, I'm just learning to love Him, and the Spirit will draw us to that love. Amen. I love God more today than ever. Verse ten. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. Do you think the Spirit is important? Yes. God has revealed His love to us by His Spirit. We need a spirit, and we need to listen to the spirit, because the spirit will take us from believing the things of our flesh over believing the things of the spirit. And that's what we're going to talk about next. How do we go from believing the things of the world, our fleshly wisdom, our fleshly desires, to believing the things of the spirit? Let's turn to Galatians chapter 5, where we started. And Romans tells us that or we can't even please God. We're not able to please God. We're actually an enemy of God. We, we, we have desires that we want to fulfill our fleshly desires or we want to over the filling God's desires. Amen. So let's look at this. It says verse 16, chapter 5 of Galatians, verse 16. So I say, live by the Spirit 
and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. So we all are born in the sin. That's how we are. We're all born in this original sin. We go back to Adam and Eve, Eve in the beginning. Sin entered the world by their disobedience. And we all, are, all have sin because of, we have a sin nature. We want to please ourselves. Ask anybody who's had a baby. They just desire, everything's about them, right? Uh, where do they come from? You know, there's no helping or share. You have to teach them how to grow and mature and share and love and, you know, be patient. That's all part of God's plan. So we, we have to, uh, the, the, the spirit, when we're born into God, our, well, let me just go back. Our sinful nature is all about us. What can we accomplish? What wisdom we can deal with? Or we can go to, like we just read earlier, we can go to the wisdom of God that knows everything. And the spirit of truth will lead us to truth and will help us in our situations. Look at verse 17. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. So you ever fight against, do I, should I believe in this or not believe in this? Should I do this or not do this? I want to handle, I would like to satisfy this in my life because of education, because of job, because of whatever, sexual sin. Or do I follow after the Spirit where the Spirit is going to lead me into truth, righteousness, holiness, and the peace of God will come on me because now I'm following after God. Amen? There's a difference. We always war against the flesh and the Spirit. Those that are born again here, the same thing happens to you, does it not? Once you become a Christian, it's not like oh, everything's easy. <laughs> right? It's like life is easy. I'm a Christian. I'm serving Jesus. Man, this is great because the enemy of our soul is te tempting us continuously. It would be nice if it was that way, but it's not that way. Amen? So let's go on. It says this. It says, they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And this goes back to what we've been teaching. So what we've been teaching over the last few weeks is that the law says these are all the rules on what you should do to be righteous. But in the spirit, you already know that. Come on, saints. Yes. You already know that. You know what to do, what is right and what is wrong yes. because the spirit tells you what that is already. That's why we don't need the law. Because we have the Spirit in us now. The Spirit will tell us. Even, a, even a, as an unbeliever, the Spirit will lead you and guide you to the truth. Because the Spirit wasn't given until Jesus ascended into heaven. So now the Spirit is in the world. This is where I think we miss it sometimes. We, realize, we have to realize the Spirit is to help us to what truth is. The Spirit will lead us to who God is. The Father is. The love of the Father. The Spirit will lead us to Jesus. Amen. The Spirit will lead us into righteousness and holiness. And the Spirit will lead us into peace, and sometimes when our life is all messed up, the Spirit gives us peace. Yeah. Amen? We don't have to go and say, okay, what are some of the things, I'm going to go through a list of, in a minute too, what will help you grow in the Spirit. So I'm going to tell you that, but it's not like a rule that you have to obey. I'm just going to show, give you some helps, okay? But really, I, we don't have to go back and sacrifice animals for our sin anymore, right? We don't have to do all these things of the law. We're free from the law yeah. of sin and death. Yeah. We have life through the Spirit. So our flesh is, if we obey the things of our flesh, it will always lead us to destruction. If we obey the things of the Spirit, it will lead to life. Yes, there was an amen, oh me or oh my, but you know what I'm saying? So we fight against our flesh, and we need the Spirit's help to help us to have the mind of God, because he said that we would have the mind of God. So God's mind, God's thoughts, God's desire is our desire through the Spirit. The Spirit will re uh, reveal those to us. So we can walk in the Spirit, and we can have eternal life with, Christ, with God. Hallelujah. It's such an amazing thing that they would have been free from the bondage of our sin. I had a sinful past. It's my past. The enemy wants to always bring up my past. But when I have the mind of Christ, I don't think of those things anymore. I have the mind of God, and I'm free from that. And I'm, my guilt of my sin and things I've done, right, my unbelief, I, it's all gone because now I have faith and walk in the Spirit. I simply obey what the Spirit is telling me to do, and God will lead me, right? Uh, you want to see a, a transformation in your life, in your... Uh, I'll go here in just a second. You know, in, in what's going on in the world right now, in, in, in our prejudices, 
right? How do you get over your prejudices? Because you walk in the spirit, and that you see you see other people of other races as God's children, not like like the world does. The world says, "How can people be like that?" Blah blah blah. You hear the conversations, you know, and um, all the bad stuff that comes out of the flesh, out of out of our worldly desires. But when you walk in the spirit, you see the other people of other countries and other races as God's children, just like you are. So we're all one in God. God wants everybody to be with him in the end, right? He doesn't want to, I mean, yeah, I won't get into that. But anyway, we, we, we have to have the mind of God. Amen? And we have the mind of God that brings life yes. and not death. Hallelujah. So let's look at what brings death and what brings life here on the lessons. But verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Praise the Lord for that. The acts of the sinful nature or the flesh are these. It's obvious, it says. Look at that word in my Bible. It says, the acts of the sinful nature are ob excuse me, obvious. Are they obvious? When people are in the flesh or you're in the flesh, you kind of know right away. Right? It's right. Look what it says. Sexual immorality, impurity, uh, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord. I mean, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions. Dissension, fashions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and all the like. And you can add to that list, add and add and add to that list. It's not that's not exhaustive. It just you can just add to the list. You could, you could write a whole book on all the stuff that is takes us away from God and, and satisfies our flesh and desires. Amen. And, and this is what he's saying. Paul's saying here is that this these are the things that take us away from God. That we're, we're walking in the flesh. So just examine yourself. Like, is there is there any things in those in my life is like this? Then you're not walking in the in the spirit. And so I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So let's go back at it. Isn't that important to know? It, what does it mean to inherit the kingdom of God? This is what interesting. I always thought when I read this, and I learned something new this week, so I'm gonna share it with you, right? So I always thought the kingdom of God was something in the future. Because the kingdom of God is coming. We know that the heaven and earth will be made new. Everything's going to be right. The kingdom of God is coming. We know that. We know, but we also know that the kingdom of God is now, Jesus said. It's right now. that You can experience the kingdom of God in your life right now. And I read that over and over and again. I said, the kingdom of God, we inherit the kingdom of God. We inherit the kingdom of God. Once you say yes to Jesus, once you say no to unbelief, once you say no to all these other things, you repent. You change your mind, you put on the mind of God instead of your own personal mind and belief, and all of a sudden something changes. I now have the mind of God. And the peace of God comes over me. And look what happens after that. Once you say yes to that, all of a sudden this changes from selfishness or fleshly living to spiritual living. And this is what happens. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is this. So the fruit of the Spirit. So we, we attach to the vine. The fruit of that can be what Jesus is, his character in our lives. We can be just like him in the world. And look what it says we can have. It's so beautiful. It says we can have love. The spirit of love. Wow. So God, you love me. I get that. I'm learning that. But you love everybody else. So I, the fruit that comes out of me should be love. Love should flow to, through me because that's what Jesus' very character was, was love. And that's the same character of God, the Father, is love. Because in John chapter 3, it says this, For God so what? Love the world. He didn't love like the Americans. He didn't love, he loved everybody, right? So this gospel is like for everybody in the whole world. That he gave his only begotten son. So God loved us and then he gave his son to us. And if we believe in him, it says what? We won't perish, but we have eternal life. It's amazing that, God, that what God does. So he will give us, and so we walk, don't walk after our flesh and desires, but we walk after our spirit. Uh, we walk after the spirit and have the mind of God. Then it says this, the fruit, the first fruit that we'll have is love. And the second one I love is great because it's joy. We're getting there here in this church, right? And we have joy because we know our relationship with Father God. It's amazing. We can be happy like all the time. How come you're so happy, Andy? Your house is destroyed. You're, you've got, you know, debt, you got this, you got that. Your car is broken. How come you're so happy? Because joy, because God gives us joy. Because my hope is not in the things I see in this world. My hope is in God. That's right. You should learn Andy's story. You'll be amazed at all the stuff that Andy and Rachel are going through right now. He's such a trooper. You know, I just love, uh, you know, love, but. But yeah, you're going through stuff, but you don't know it. 
You can ask them, you know? We're all going, we, and all of us are going through stuff, right? But God says we can love, we have the fruit of love, we have joy. Look at what else it says, this first couple right here. Peace. Love, joy, I, I'd be happy with that. Give me some love, give me some joy, give me some peace, I'm good, right? I mean, the peace means that God's presence is in my life, so I'm good. Just give me those three, I, I'm, I'm good, right? But God says, oh no, there's more. I want to give you more. Listen, not only love, not only joy, but I want to give you peace. I want to give you some patience, because you're going to probably need some patience to deal with the things of this world. Because he's, you're going to have victory in your situation if you just wait on God to give you the victory. Amen. If you do it early, if you try to handle it yourself, guess what? You're not going to have the victory. But if you wait upon God, those that wait upon the Lord will what? Renew their strength. God's going to give you victory in your situation. You don't have to be defeated. He's going to give you the patience to hang on. Amen. Amen? Come on, love me. The victory is right around the corner, God. I know it is because your word tells me it is. I'm not, I'm not going to give up. How about some kindness? God says, part of the fruit of abiding in, your, in the spirit realm, instead of the flesh realm, I'm going to be kind to people. See, if I'm not kind to people, I'm walking in the flesh. Examine yourself. <laughs> Examine yourself, right? Just look at yourself. If I'm not kind to people, I'm not actually walking in, in, what, in, what, in the power of God. Because God is kind. Look, everywhere Jesus went. Everywhere Jesus went. You just examine Jesus' life. He was kind. When, when the woman at the well, I love that story. When she was at the well in the afternoon, she, had to take, uh, she was going there to grab, uh, get water for her family. And Jesus met her, right? The world would have, first of all, she was Samaritan, so she was like another race that was half, you know, uh, Jewish and half Samaritan, or uh, um, anyway, Samaritan. And, and, and Jesus talked to her like he wasn't even supposed to talk to her. Because she was a woman, first of all, and she wasn't, he wasn't, he, and she wasn't Jewish. But Jesus' act, act of kindness to her began to show her her life and showed her uh, what she, her problems were and gave her the answer to what she was looking for. A beautiful story. Look it up in John. And then it says that not only that you'll be kind, but goodness, how about faithfulness to God, faithfulness to Him. How about being gentle? I mean, I can get mean. You know, I can get cranky sometimes. But kind of love wins better. It's better to love to be gentle than it is to be right, Tina? You know, just... And then, like, I'm... Okay, so how about this one? Self-control. The last one. So I'm in my flesh sometimes, and then I'm in the spirit, right? And I'm in the flesh, and then I'm in the spirit. And I'm, in, I'm, I'm trying to be in the spirit, but I have no, I'm like, I have no self-control. I'm like, I'm always trying to listen to my flesh. See, Jesus said part of the fruit is that I have, I have self-control. I won't walk back here. I won't be tempted back here because the spirit is in me now. I don't have to do the things of the spirit. Come on, smile at me. You know it's good. Yeah. It's good. Oh. Verse 24. It says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature, its passions and its desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying towards each other. So those that are mature can help those that are growing anymore, right? Let's not... Now, let's not be jealous of each other. Oh, Linda's more spiritual than me, so she must be really like, no, we're all equal in God's eyes. Yeah. We're, as one, just, we're all the same in His eyes. Yeah. We're not. To overcome the, uh, to overcome things of selfishness, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's going to lead you to Jesus. Where Jesus can take all that sin away and restore us to a loving relationship with the Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen? We're free from sin. We're free from the bondage if we walk in the Spirit. We don't walk in our flesh and we walk in the Spirit. So here's some things that will help you keep our minds set on the Spirit instead of the things of this world. There's a couple things I've said. We should, first of all, we need to consciously want to set our mind on the Spirit. Amen? 
and ask God, ask the Spirit to give you revelation in the Word of God, and He will do that, of who He is and how important He is. And He will always tell you what, He will always lead you back to Jesus. So if you want to walk in the Spirit, you need to know who Jesus is. Amen? And the Holy Spirit will always reveal to you not only the, the truth of God's Word, but it also reveals to you sin in your life. Right? So when you're praying and you're seeking the mind of God, God through His Spirit will show you the sin in your life and then you can confess that sin and get rid of that sin out of your life or change your way. So maybe I'm a little too uh, fleshly in this one area of my life and the Holy Spirit will reveal that to us so we can have the mind of Christ. Um, and then the Holy Spirit will lead you to the people you should love. Right? It's, it's, I was... Uh, at uh, Isaac's uh, so uh, soccer game yesterday. And I was listening to the news in the morning, so I was hearing about all the, the, the trauma that was going on in the world, out in Dallas and all over, and I'm like, okay, God, there's a way to overcome this. That means if I see somebody that uh, is not like me, I should reach out to them and help out. So I did. I, I, I met a, a young man that's uh, coming up from, from Illinois and is going to be moving up here. And, and, you know, anyway, just reach out and talk to him because I just wanted to hear what he was dealing with and stuff. And it's just amazing. So, God, we need to love people. And we'll, just like Christ loved them. And we can't do that because our, our flesh gets in the way. We're, we're, sometimes we're prejudiced in nature. We need to get rid of that. We have the mind of God and the God who shows us to love everyone. So we should listen to the Spirit. So how do we listen to the Spirit? This is what I, I can, this is suggested. So as we're reading our Bible, how many have, how many like to journal? Does anybody journal here anymore? Is that just old school stuff? Sometimes, off and on, yeah, that's kind of me. I'm getting, I'll go a couple weeks and then I'll stop, and I'll go a couple days and stop, and you know, I have one journal for a whole year, it's only supposed to last a couple months. But anyway, you know, but what I do when I'm reading the Word of God in our, in our missional community, we're, we're, we're going through the uh, handbook, and so that's really helpful because every day I got to write something down. And so as I'm reading the scripture, write down uh, what the Spirit is saying to you, amen, and, and write it and, and journal it. And then sometimes when you're, when you're doing that, just listen. Sometimes stop, write, stop reading, stop writing, and just stop for a moment and just listen to what the Spirit is saying to you, and He will do that. So there's, um, I'm going to challenge you uh, today to um, take time to, um, well, I'm going I'm to quote Jesus, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Let me quote Jesus. Can you not tarry for one hour? Right? I'm going to challenge you to, to this week, just this week, let's do it this week, you know. I don't know if I have somebody's traveling, so it might be a little difficult, but it's a plane ride, real long. But I know you're going to be busy with those two little ones, so it might be difficult. But can't you just take an hour to pray and and be with God and let Him speak to you and let and and, and uh, refresh your thoughts about who He is. Amen. Take a moment to do that and and refresh uh, your thoughts on Him. So we have some. Today, as we call, I'm close today, I want to do this. We're going to break up into small groups today. All right? Maybe four or five people. Right? And I have a couple questions for you today. What is something new that you heard about the Holy Spirit today? When I was preaching, what's something new that maybe you haven't heard before that the Holy Spirit did? And, uh, and if it's new, then how do you think it impacts your life? How will you examine it? How, now that I heard that, how is it going to impact my life? Amen? And then, what steps will you take to uh, make room for the Holy Spirit in your life? So three things, right? Uh, what's something new that you might have heard today? How does it impact your life? And then, how are you going to make room uh, for this Holy Spirit in your life? Because we, you know, as we're te teaching on this certain series, we're not going to be in bondage anymore. And so we don't have to follow the rules. We just need to follow the Spirit. Is that okay? There's rules. But those rules will become law, and they, they'll come bounding, uh, binding in our lives. Like, oh my God, I do this. The Spirit of God is fluent. He's always teaching us and leading us to truth. And so we need to be free to listen to the Spirit. And that's it. If the Spirit tells you to do something contrary to your flesh, you that you'll be obedient to that. Amen. 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 So can we do that today? Let's do that. Let's break up in groups. Take take a few minutes, maybe five, ten minutes, and. Um,
maybe you can just get a, maybe a group there and there and there and there and, and let's do that. What is something uh, new in your life? And just take a few minutes and pray for each other and then uh, I'll have somebody come up. Uh, Richard, may come up and close in a few, about 10 minutes, okay? Thank you.